Here on Flow FM, great to chat again with Michael Kernis, the Senior Agricultural Analyst at the Rural Bank. How are you, Michael? Yeah, good. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, look, we've uh, got a lot to cover, haven't we, with uh, regard to cattle and sheep? Your latest insights publication from Rural Bank's out now. Yeah, that's right. Our uh, monthly commodity update uh, has come out, and that covers uh, six major agricultural commodities uh, across Australia. But um, yeah, looking at cattle and sheep, there's plenty going on at the moment. Sure is. Now, looking at the cattle side of the equation first, um, looks like um, we've got some higher prices, you're indicating, because the slaughter rate's pulled back a bit. Yeah, that's right. We've seen um, the Eastern Young Cattle Indicator sit a bit higher in the last month, so it climbed back up above uh, 1,000 cents a kilo, and um, yeah, it's sitting pretty strong um, after recovering from uh, where it was in early July. And yeah, that does seem to come down to some tighter supply in the last month, so we did have a couple of um, shortened weeks with uh, public holidays, which would have uh, reduced some processor capacity, uh, but also the impacts of uh, wet weather um, slowing down the movement of stock as well. So, yeah, tight supply has uh, helped to, to lift prices in the last month. Okay, and what are we seeing in terms of, I guess, the long-term um, trend on the Australian cattle indicators? Uh, look, it looks like we're still heading in a generally upward direction over the last few years. Yeah, so we're expecting... Um, Expecting to see prices um, rise marginally in the next next month or so. Um, so uh, many cattle regions are looking pretty good um, condi- conditions wise. So um, expecting some some restocker demand to be to be pretty firm um, and matching that with with tight supply as well is uh, beneficial for prices. Um, so yeah, it's looking pretty good on that front. I suppose the the main factor at the moment that's a concern is international markets where there's some uh, competition from the US and, and other suppliers that are uh, yeah, competing at a, a cheaper price point. So that's, um, that's challenging the competitiveness of Australian beef at the moment. All right, that might have an impact, well, maybe in the, the middle to longer term, I suppose. Uh, when we look on the sheep side of things, we've got this general sort of upward climb on the trade lamb indicator with Meat and Livestock Australia. What's going on there? Yeah, we have seen the lamb price start to improve uh, from uh, dropping off pretty substantially in July. Um, so that's good that it's been able to rise and hold on um, to a, a, a decent level and particularly important to, to see it holding there is that, as we've seen yardings rise in the last month as those new season lambs come onto the market. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of demand out there for those new season lambs uh, and uh, reports saying they're in pretty good condition. Um, so it's good to see prices are, are holding up all right. Um, but despite that improvement, um, the national lamb indicators are between 19 and 23 percent below where they were this time last year. So, um, yeah, the steady downward trends we've seen this year, but um, yeah, a improvement from uh, where they were a couple of months ago. We do check in regularly with what's happening in the Wagga sale yards. A lot of trade done there. I, I gather you're seeing a particularly an uplift in yardings from New South Wales as well. Yeah, that's right. They were one of the the, the strongest states in the last month, and yeah, expecting them to. Start to slow down now and we'll see the Victorian supply come on a lot stronger. That's got a fair way to go to peak uh, later in the year. So, um, yeah, good start from New South Wales and expecting Victoria to come on later. And what's the on the slaughter equation? Obviously a big demand side um, factor. What's happening on the slaughter front? Yes, we saw slaughter slow down in September and similar story to beef with um, getting those land to to processes and also the impact of some shorter weeks. Um, But, yeah, looking at um, slaughter... seems to be holding up pretty well with the combined sheep and lamb slaughter um, reaching a high for this year in in mid-September, but still below what the level that we normally see um, in October and December. So there's a bit of room there for slaughter to increase as uh, that spring supply really ramps up. Um, So, yeah, it's good to see the processing capacity is holding up because that has been a challenge this year. Um, but it'll need to increase a bit further uh, in the next couple of months. Yeah, I guess on the demand side, we're probably seeing what the whole nation's experiencing, a challenge finding staff to get the job done. Yeah, that's right. We've looked at the the average trends and expecting about another 72,000 head per week that um, slaughter capacity will need to find. Um, So, yeah, finding the the people uh, to do that uh, will be the challenge to um, see if the industry can match that. Well, those insights in greater detail are available for you at ruralbank.com.au. Michael Curtis, Senior Agricultural Analyst at Rural Bank, thanks for joining us today on Flow. No worries. Thanks for having me.